so this is a video I've been waiting almost two years to make um, as is usually the case I have three or four or five prepping projects going on at any one time and all the pieces have finally come together for something that I'm pretty excited about in this Great Lakes prepping video I'm gonna show you my solar powered backup sump pump system uh, like I said this has been a while in the making um, the actual physical work was probably only a total of about 20 hours all added up um, but you know how life works there's a million things to do and not much time to do them in a normal week um, but it's finally done and operational and now I can show you all what I did and by the way I'm doing this first part as a voiceover because the neighbors are running a wood chipper or something and that's about all you'd hear if I played the audio from this clip Anyway, I've spent a lot of time thinking about what problems I'd have if basic services and or utilities were to stop working. It's really what drives my urge to prep. Uh, what problems will I have if the tap water stops flowing? Uh, what happens if the furnace breaks? What happens if the power goes out? Well, I have contingencies for a whole lot of stuff, but most of them rely on me physically being here at this house. If the power goes out, I can fire up the generator, uh, but what if I'm out of town? I'm on a camping trip or hunting or something and a big storm knocks out the power. Well I can uh, replace the food in my fridge. Uh, it sucks but whatever. It doesn't have any permanent or long-term uh, consequences. But if the sump pump in the basement stops pumping and it's raining it won't take but a couple hours before my basement starts to flood. And if you've seen my other videos you know I've got plenty of stuff in my basement that I'd rather not see destroyed um, including my uh, over-the-top pantry room that I built. Um, I'd rather not have to um, figure out how to tear walls or any of that stuff out and replace it. So um, the, the problem at hand was how can I make sure that my sump well never overflows? Sump pit, whatever you call those things. And if a sump pump breaks or the power goes out and I'm not here to do something about it the the consequences could be absolutely disastrous so the obvious solution was a battery backup that powers a backup sump pump but why not take it a step further and make sure that the battery always stays nice and charged so here we are I also built this whole thing in a way that I could somewhat easily scale it up so I could do more things. Um, I could add panels, batteries, inverters with mm, a relatively low amount of effort. Um, I could eventually create a whole backup system that could power all sorts of different stuff. Uh, anyway, um, any basic solar power system has three components. The solar panel, the charge controller, and the battery. The panel charges the battery, and the controller makes sure that the battery can't be overcharged and it makes sure that my electrical devices can only run when the battery has enough charge. Um, so this is obviously my solar panel. It came as part of a kit that included the panel, the charge controller, a couple mounting brackets, and some wire. I bought this particular kit on Amazon for about a hundred bucks. I'll post the link in the video description. Um, I didn't end up using the wire because I needed longer wires than what came with it. Um, so in trying to figure out the best way to mount the panel to the house or otherwise, I went with this. I used a long satellite dish pole, uh, the kind that you might um, attach a, a dish TV or one of those satellite, um, small satellite dishes to your house with, and a solar panel mounting bracket. Um, and just to be on the safe side, I added a, this adjustable brace to support the pole in case the panel gets um, really heavy for some reason, such as under a thick snowfall or something. Um, this bracket or this brace just goes from the top of the pole and attaches to the roof. Um, if I was to do this all over again, I don't think I would have gone with this mounting method. Um, the satellite dish pole sounded like a great idea but it ended up being kind of a pain to work with um, and I I don't really like that it has to mount down the center of the panel rather than in two spots near the sides that seems a lot more stable um, but this panel's small enough that it seems pretty stable the way I have it but again it was just kind of a pain 
I think if I expanded my system or, or ever replaced all of this, I'd probably, um, you know, cement a tall pole into the ground and mount panels to that. Um, anyway, I'll paste the Amazon links to all this stuff below as well. Uh, so, you can see I ran some plastic conduit from the panel across the house a bit and straight down to a hole that was already in my bricks for some unrelated thing that was already there when I bought the place. Um, seemed easier to run my wires through this hole that already existed rather than uh, drilling a new hole through my house. Uh, so that's the panel and the mounting setup. Uh, next I'll go into the basement and show you the rest. Alright, now we're in the basement and I can show you the real guts of this setup. Uh, real quick, uh, when I started doing all this I was looking for some kind of a cabinet or storage rack or something that I could um, use for all the components. Uh, but I couldn't really find anything that I liked, so I had little recourse but to build something of my own that was exactly what I was looking for. Um, I made it such that uh, this big lid keeps any dust out of there for the most part. And under here, there's uh, all the components and there's I left plenty of extra room in case I want to add any other things on here. Um, sooner or later I'm probably going to uh, put an inverter on this whole thing and have a couple of plug outlets. But anyway, uh, first here uh, we have the charge controller. Uh, this is the charge controller that came with my solar panel kit. Um, you can see here on the LED readout on the thing, you can cycle through a few different readouts. Um, I'll admit that I haven't memorized what every one of these are for. But the normal screen is this one, and it shows you uh, the panel, the battery, and then the thing that you're feeding from the battery, in my case, a sump pump. Now I actually bought and planned to install uh, a, a separate uh, meter that had a bunch of different readouts on this screen here. Um, but as I found out when I started putting all this together, it was completely unnecessary as the charge controller itself has all those readouts on it. So left this thing un uninstalled and I'll end up using that hole for something else, I guess. Um, right here we have the relays that uh, turn the backup pump on and off depending on the position of the floats. And here is a couple of USB outlets and a, a cigarette lighter style outlet. And uh, this thing, this thing's sold I think generally for marine boat purposes, but I like the way it looked. And it also happens to have um, another another uh, voltage meter on it. So whatever, that's fine. So under here I made this whole panel on a hinge so I could get to the underneath side of it to, to uh, you know, work on the wiring so I didn't have to try to climb under this thing and reach over my head. Um, that's proven to be pretty useful. Uh, as you can see down there, storage for the battery, but I can also get to that through these doors. Um, <clears throat> it's a great big deep cycle battery and I made this thing big enough that I could put up to about four of these in here if I ever really wanted to expand this setup. So the solar panel has wires coming off of it. Those come into the house up here. Those go down into the back of this cabinet and attached to the charge controller. And the charge controller uh, goes to these uh, relays as well as the pump itself. And I'll show you that as best I can. Um, so this is the, the pipe here for the, the original default sump pump, which is a full-size residential sump pump. And I attached this, this black pipe um, basically to uh, one of these, one of these beams and it sits down at the bottom of the, the sump well 
uh, pit, whatever. And all it does is support stuff uh, attached to it. It doesn't by itself do anything. Um, uh, it's kind of hard to see what's going on down here, but uh, at the lower part of this frame, you see that white, uh, this white component. That's the backup sump pump. It's just a simple 12 volt pump. Um, I don't know if it was uh, meant as a bilge pump or what, but it was um, small and inexpensive, and I can keep a couple on hand as backups in case this one ever stops working. Um, you can see uh, right about, uh, let's see if I can point at this, right about at the tip of my finger here is that dingy looking gross uh, switch for the original sump pump. Because this pit's so narrow, I had to get that thing out of the way. That's the floater switch for the original pump. So I had to get that thing out of the way because there was just no room to do what I needed to do in there and make sure that that thing would still activate when the water uh, rises. Um, so I replaced it with uh, a sort of a vertical uh, basic float switch. It's this all-in-one kit they sell at the hardware store. It's kind of hard to see, but it's it's... Uh, this this black cylinder kind of at the tip of my finger there that has floats in it that uh, when the water goes up it turns the original sump pump on. Now the idea of this backup pump of course is that if that pump doesn't turn on for whatever reason either the pump fails or the power is out um, slightly higher up and attached to this black pipe are two more floats and that's Again, I'm going to try to do this without having to put my whole hand down there. That's this this thing and the one above it. And the way that works is when the water um, goes high up enough to lift both of those floats, the pump will activate. And the wa when the water returns back down low enough that both floats go back down, the pump turns off. Um, now I've only ever seen this thing in action during tests where we unplug the main sump pump and fill this pit with water just to see it work and it works pretty awesome um, it's, like I said that pump is just a small 12 volt pump and uh, and this this white tube coming off of it is the uh, is the output and you can see that that's about a I don't know about an 8 foot vertical that it lifts up that water and then it goes quite a ways down this 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 tube before it uh, exits through another hole in the uh, side of the house. Um, so I'm pretty impressed with that little little workhorse of a pump. And you can see I still got a little bit of cleanup to do with this wiring. It, it's, I'm sure it's fine. It just looks kind of ugly. And actually, this whole area looks kind of ugly. And I considered building a little. Uh, I don't know, closet or something around it, but I haven't quite figured out how to do that, being that it's so close to these windows. But that's a problem for another time. Anyhow, uh, that's 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 uh, more or less the the whole thing. Um, like I said, this has been going on for the better part of about two years, and I'm super happy that it's all up and running. I feel a lot more secure when I'm not here. That my basement isn't going to flood, no matter what kind of rain we get or power outages. Uh, this battery has enough, uh, you know, can store enough juice to run that pump for a very, very long time. Um, so as long as I get a sunny day, at least every <laughs> once in a while, um, the thing will stay nice and charged. So if you have any questions about this, uh, you know, let me know in the comments. I had a lot of help on all this uh, from a very talented electrician and um, I'll call him an engineer although that's not technically what his profession is but he's basically an engineer and borderline inventor so uh, I'll do my best to answer any questions um, some of the real specific stuff about the wiring and the uh, the electrical mm, I'm gonna have to uh, either wing it or reach out to him to see if he can answer but uh, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, everything, maybe not including this cabinet, was uh, less than $500 for sure. Um, honestly, wire costs so much that 
Um, that probably cost as much as the panel itself when all was said and done. Um, not to say I didn't end up wasting some wire or buying the wrong kind of wire. That doesn't really matter. The point is that uh, for the peace of mind that this thing provides, um, I think it's well worth the price. Um, so yeah, there it is. I'll see you next time.